The real estate market here in Sacramento is going crazy as interest rates start to go back up towards seven. Have you missed your opportunity to buy? We're going to talk a little bit about this right now. Let's get into it. Aaron, how's it going today? Hey, what's what's going on, man? Things are well. I, you know, I, I, I hate to, you know, be the one that like gets to, you know, tap ourselves on the back or whatever. But I mean, I feel like if you go back, you know, like almost two years and, and you, you, you know, you've been watching the show, we've been consistently messaging that, you know, you basically you need to be ready to pounce and seize the, you know, let's call them pockets of, of opportunity. And I, I think that over the last like two weeks, you know, that theory has once again proven to be really solid because basically we saw, you know, about a, a week and a half ago, the Federal Reserve, they concluded their meeting and they gave the markets, they, they basically gave them the feeling that they were going to lower rates in September. They didn't say, hey, we're going to lower rates in September, but they gave the markets uh, the belief that that would happen through their, their uh, verbiage. And what we saw was, you know, that following Friday when we got an unemployment report that ticked up more than what was forecasted. Basically, it reminded me of like Home Depot selling, you know, right now they're selling all their uh, Halloween and Christmas stuff because there's only so many Halloween and Christmas consumer dollars available. And so we kind of saw that, you know, about a week and a half ago, all the bond traders out there trying to, you know, seize the, you know, available consumer dollars for those bonds, for refinances, for all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, it was exciting, honestly, uh, you know, when, when things were going down, I was like, oh, thank God, it's finally happening. Rates are, are finally heading in the right direction. And then what happens that following Monday, the Bank of Japan raised their rate a quarter of a point. They actually had to turn around and, and reverse course because it messed up all the carry trades, which we don't have time to dive into what carry trades are. But the Bank of Japan hadn't changed the rate since the 90s. So that caused a bunch of unforeseen turmoil. We also got like a bunch of uh, American uh, economic data about manufacturing and stuff like that. But basically, the inflation narrative came right back into our face and that drove interest rates back up. And so it was really kind of annoying, honestly, because it was like, you know, everybody got very excited on Friday. The media got really behind like, hey, rates are at a low, da, 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 da. And so, of course, like the phones are blowing up. Consumers are like, oh, my God, it's my time. And then what happened? They waited too long. And all of a sudden, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and rates are back to where they were before the Fed even opened their mouth. And so it, it really held true the whole theory of, you know, you got to be ready to pounce. Because I, I did have, you know, some clients, I know you do too, Mark, where, they were in the process. They were already ready to pounce and they either wrote offers and bought houses. I had some clients that I had been talking to about refinancing and we were like, hey, it doesn't make sense today. But when rates get to, you know, whatever, we got to be ready to pounce. And so we already had all their stuff ready to go and, and we were able to basically seize the opportunity and get them a really great deal before things change. So it's you know, like, like you and I always say, you got to be ready to pounce. You know what I mean? Well, I, I here's the thing. Like, one is also I want to clarify something, too. We're not saying that, you know, try timing the market. We're always about timing your own life, right? But like, but Aaron and I also realize the fact that when someone's ready to buy and their life is ready to buy, their cycle can be like three months, six months, a year. So for sure. us, when we say this, it's basically like get educated about what you're looking to buy, know the areas, know the communities, get your lender, get your realtor and get your team together and then start kind of like keeping an eye on Zillow and get everything together. This doesn't mean like, oh, interest rates are, are low, so everyone's buying, so I'm going to buy. Don't do that. That's just going to, mm. that's horrible, 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 horrible advice. The idea is that if it's your time to buy and you're feeling like this is my time, you know, we're having another baby. 
we like Folsom, let's say, and we'd like these three communities, the idea for you is always to kind of do your research and just kind of figure it out, but also realize that that house that you're looking for might not pop up the first week. It might pop up like three months from now or two weeks mm-hmm. or whatever, and to kind of be right with everything you got going. That, therefore, when you see that house and you decide to pounce or you see a pocket of opportunity, all of a sudden, like, you're scrambling. Oh, God, Aaron, can you get me a pre-approval? I watch your show. Or Mark, hey, can we go see that house? Don't do that to yourself. Get everyone on the same page. Get yourself in sync with everything so mm-hmm. that when you see a pocket of time, pocket of opportunity, or like, you know, like you get to, you, you can just pounce on it and grab it and, you know, make that house kind of yours, you know? Um, same thing goes with interest rates, right? It's not saying totally. that all of a sudden, because interest rates are low, that means that even if you weren't planning on buying, you should buy. No, no, no. It's for the people who basically are saying, I want to buy. I'm looking for that moment. I started to look maybe about a month ago and now I'm kind of looking. Um, there are going to be these moments as we've seen, you know, like, let's be honest, everyone out there, Jerome Powell wears a different color tie and all of a sudden everyone thinks rates are going down, rates are going up. No one knows the situation. So the best advice I can give anybody in this market is be prepared, be educated and be ready if your time is right to buy. Um, and like, like I said, for me, I was telling Aaron, cause we were talking about this offline, if rates are going to go up, if they're going to go down. And I told him, I'm like, based on everything that the fed, and based on everything that I'm seeing, um, I, I I just don't have that much confidence in rates going down. Even when they're going down last week and the week before the sixes, I was thinking mm-hmm. to myself, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. Um, and so like end of last week, all of a sudden we saw that big spike on the live show we do on Wednesday. And like, I was like, oh, you know, hopefully Monday brings us good news, but let's talk about Monday today. What, what did you see? What are the factors that for you are making you feel like, oh my God, we could be back to the sevens? Well, we continue to basically, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not being political here at all, but a lot of the reports that uh, the markets hang their hat on, these are government reports. I'm talking about like the Bureau of Labor Statistics, stuff like that, that the, that the government provides. Well, they do massive revisions. I mean, for instance, on the BLS uh, uh, reports that come out every single Friday, it's the jobless claims reports. Jobless claims is just a fancy way of saying unemployment requests, um, unemployment claims. So that happens every single Friday. We get the report. Would you believe that if you look at the last 12 months of reporting on the BLS, that there's been over 1 million in in unit count upward revisions, meaning that like things were a lot worse than the way that it was initially reported. But by the time, you know, two months goes by, three months goes by or whatever, and they, they provide the revisions, well, the damage to the economy, to the rate trends, all that stuff's already, you know, done. And so it's very difficult to put confidence in a lot of that type of, of, you know, reporting. And then in addition to, you know, the, the ambiguous reporting that, that, you know, really sways the markets, you got so many wild curveballs that are happening right now that could significantly impact the market. For instance, uh, right now the markets are betting uh, that the Fed in September is going to raise the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points. It's 100% chance is what they're betting right now. But w- what we've seen time and time and time again is that everybody has been wrong on their forecasting and that the Fed isn't really you know, that hawkish on dropping rates. And so what, what could happen is I think it's likely that they're only going to do a quarter point. And if they only do a quarter point, that's going to just cause so much market disruption and we'll see rates spike because of that, which will be weird, right? Because you're like, well, didn't they just lower the Fed funds rate by a quarter? Why did we see mortgage rates spike up? Well, you got that. You got the elections. You got all this stuff going on in Iran. I mean, if if that pops off, that's going to cause oil inflation. It's going to cause supply chain disruption with the the canals you know potentially getting shut off or just you know all all sorts of uh you know hot things going on over there so you you just have so much stuff going on because we are a global economy and so it's really tough to you know predict the future And, and you know that's really why 
you know, being ready to basically pounce like we keep talking about. That's that's the whole point is that you just you have no idea what's going to happen in, in terms of the future, in terms of what's going to basically create, uh, you know, a situation where rates are going to drop and or you're going to have more opportunity to get your offer accepted with a seller because of market conditions. And so, you know, being ready to pounce really is just like you said, defined as, as you know, you've, you've, you're pre-approved or you got your cash, you got your real estate team together, you've already kind of made up your mind on what you want and you're just waiting for the right opportunity to pop up so you can pounce on it versus it pops up and you're like, oh my God, I love this thing. And then by the time you get, you know, everything in order, it's already passed. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of uncertainty in the future. And I do think that it's, it's quite possible we could see rates, you know, tick back up, you know, depending on how crazy things get this fall with, with politics. It's, it's nuts. I mean, here's the thing. If I'm a buyer, I'm so annoyed at this point. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm so annoyed. For the first time in a while, I thought I was actually going to get a break. Rates were going to drop, and I was super excited that maybe, just mm -hmm. maybe, I'm going to jump out there and buy a house. And now I'm seeing the spike back up. It's almost like it's just being messed with a little bit. Like So for totally. the buyers that we work with, oh, my God. Like I, If you guys feel the emotion of what I'm talking about right now, it's basically because it's frustrating for me as well. Um, you know, in our team, I mean, we're working with so many buyers right now that have been just like, oh my God, is this a break that we've been wanting? Interest rates are going down. Finally, could we be going in that direction? You know, we've been kind of getting beat up in the market. All of a sudden, new homes are offering their incentives. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, if we want resale, it looks like inventory is piling up a little bit too. Oh yes, all sign. And then this happens. So it's like, I feel... I don't know. I feel just like, I feel just like, you know, there's a knife somewhere in my back. I got to pull out because, you know, like, I feel like I've just, I, I just, you know, ugh, just got it right there. I mean, I feel, oh, yeah. I feel bad. I feel like, you know, I think there's a lot of people right now that were like, maybe just maybe, you know, we wrote off buying a home and now the rates are getting better and this could be our time. And okay, let's start looking again. Let's start downloading Zillow again. Let's put the apps back on our phone and let's go. To have mm -hmm. this kind of information hit and just not have that uncertainty to like, no, no, guys, it's a blip. Rates are going back down to have more of like the idea that this could be something that we see rates be what they were a couple, you know, three weeks ago. And then we're in the sevens again. And this is mm -hmm. really kind of disheartening. Um, but I will say one thing. This is this is my biggest um, takeaway from all this. Right. If you're really rate conscious, if rates are something that like are your thing and you're, you know, you can still, of course, throw in an offer to resale. You can get like a buy down of the rate and all that stuff too. Um, but I will say one thing is just understand that the market is extremely volatile right now. Things are not steady at all. Stock market, unemployment numbers, mm -hmm. all that stuff too, like Aaron was talking about. All this stuff, as you can see, one report, two reports, everything just completely jars the market in one way or the other. So like I said, the biggest point of this video, and Aaron and I were talking about this, was to give you guys a little bit of a heads up to understand that like, at this point in time, if you're thinking, I'm ready to buy a house. I just haven't found the house or, you know, I'm kind of waiting for the right moment to kind of pounce in there. Like get the education piece done, figure out those streets, those communities, the areas, mm -hmm. how fast are houses selling price per square foot? Um, is there any new building? And if I'm looking at new homes, where are the new developments happening in the area? New communities coming to the market. Do your research. The beautiful part about technology nowadays as well, too, is the fact that everything is at your fingertips, especially with the Sacramento yep. Real Estate app that you can be downloading below. But everything's at your fingertips. You can figure out everything. Schools, how far it is from work, all that stuff, too. So do that. If you are in the market to buy a house, figure it out and just kind of get yourself educated and just, you know, be prepared. Be prepared, honestly, for a crazy like sevens dancing and sixes and inventory. I mean, it's a market that honestly, like we need to do a video once a week because the market changes. I mean, th if you think even Aaron, the tone that we had last Monday comparatively towards today, it's like, oh, totally. I mean, back in the day, that's like what? Maybe a difference of like two months in the market, three months in the market. I and mean, this is like week to week. So I would just say, just keep educated on what's going on, get your team together, get the pre-approval ready, if it's your time to buy, but also just, just be aware that, like Aaron and I have been talking about for a long, long time, 
the new real estate market is about pockets of opportunity and you being educated enough where if you're, it's your time to buy, you're ready to pounce. Um, and like I said, I don't know what next week is going to be like. Honestly, we could come back Monday and I, I just don't know. I, I, know. I also think misinformation is out there too when you have people saying, oh, oh yeah, um, we're going up, we're going up. And then next week they're going down. They're going, for us, we'll be the first ones to tell you, man, we do not have a crystal ball. All we can tell you about how the market looks right this moment, the factors and educate you. And that's kind of what this is all about. Right, Aaron? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you, you bring up uh, an important point that I, I thought I'd just share with the audience. Is a lot of people don't realize this, but mortgage rates change every single day that the bond market is open, which is typically all, you know, they're obviously closed on federal holidays, just like banks. But I mean, it basically like if you're on the West Coast like us, it opens at 6 a.m. and it closes at uh, 1 p.m. And basically, uh, you know, things can change all throughout the day and some days things change wildly like and and what i mean by that is like rates could be you know at let's say six and a half percent at the open at 6 a.m and then all of a sudden you know we get a uh, inflation report that showed inflation jumped up and then there was a two-year treasury auction that didn't go well and so that caused prices to inflate further and by the end of the day you know, that same six and a half rate is now 6.75 or, you know, something like that. And so things can can change on a dime uh, it, it can go in the opposite direction as well, which is where those those pockets of opportunity are or whatever. And so a lot of times what I see is when you're on, you know, any mainstream media website or, or TV or whatever, those people, they're not in mortgage or real estate. They don't have their their thumb on the pulse of things. And so a lot of times what they're reporting is the Freddie Mac weekly rate survey, which is a survey that's conducted over a week ago. So they're literally reporting like two weeks in the past, typically when you see stuff on the television or, you know, on online or whatever, and they're talking about mortgage rates. So, you know, just stick with the pros, reach out to Mark and I, watch the show. We'll keep you guys up to date on what's really going on. All right, Aaron. Now well, let's do some parting words. If you had some advice for sellers right now, what would that be as of right now? Ooh, you know, right now, if, if I were selling my house, I would definitely, whether I got to bake it into my price or even make a concession to what I thought I wanted to get, I would be providing some sort of sweetener, uh, an incentive, just like I, just like I, if I were a builder, like I'm Kehoe or you know whoever, and I'm I'm providing a rate incentive because that's that's truly the biggest pain point for consumers potentially buying your house is the affordability factor of it, and you doing a price reduction of ten grand versus you buying somebody's rate down by ten grand. It's going to make such a huge impact on the monthly payment with with the rate buy down versus price reduction um, that offering something like that uh, you're going to open up the door to more people that wouldn't be able to qualify for your house otherwise and then the people that already do qualify it's an additional incentive for them to to reach out to you what what, what about you mark what uh, what advice would you give for sellers, I'd say right now, you have to kind of work with experienced people in this market, like listing mm -hmm. agents. Not just the like, hey, I'm gonna list your home, then go to Tahoe and review offers. This is a very tough one. You very much, I mean, week to week, you have to be very in tune with pricing. Week to week, things change in pricing. I mean, how fast are things moving? Price per square foot. I would definitely still price aggressively. I would probably wait the weekend, review offers in the next couple of days. I would do some great marketing because I think here's one of the things about Sacramento that I think just falls short, right? Majority of the realtors here have zero clue on how to market homes. They market it the mm. old school way, the sign in the ground, you know, maybe throw a couple posts on Instagram and do everything too. But the idea is you don't realize that Sacramento is a city, an area that we have so many people moving in from other areas. We got people moving in from LA, the Bay Area, right. Hawaii. Hawaii, we got people moving in all over the place. So you, if you don't have a national push, like uh, something that you actually see the analytics and go, oh, I get it. This is where my video is going. These are the people watching the videos, not the smoke and mirror stuff that a listing agent's going to be like, yes, we do market. Our video, 
Show me mm-hmm. the proof. Like I said, analytics aren't far to find. So I would say for if you're listing your house, understand that we do have a lot of strong buyers coming in from other areas and you should have definitely a separate marketing campaign for that area. That's something that we do. That's why we created this YouTube channel um, because we throw up the videos and we market it specifically towards areas like the Bay Area, like LA. Mm-hmm. Yes, it gets on the MLS, but these are the viewers and these are the people that might not have been thinking about Sacramento and then they see an amazing home. They do a three, 180 and they're in Sacramento looking. That's mm-hmm. what my thing would be to sellers. Um, like I said, but outside the marketing, I'd say stay in tune. Stay very, very knowledgeable about your area. See how long things are moving. Um, you know, if something goes on the market, like, you know, to this week, gauge it. See how long it's going to take. Go into the open houses. Gauge the activity, the traffic. Also, the views on Zillow. See how long, how many views that thing racks up against how many saves. There's just little things that will give you an idea if it's the right time to list your house now. Um, but also, you definitely don't list if you see other listings in the in your neighborhood. Hit the market and just sit there. It's just not a good thing. It just kind of sets a tone for your community and your area. So that would be me. Aaron, okay, buyers now. This is a big one. What do you think? Oh, for, for buyers, I would say whether you're ready to buy today or a year from today, get pre-approved and get all of your questions about the home loans answered now. Why do I say that? Well, not selfishly because I'm the mortgage guy, but as a mortgage guy that's been doing this for 20 plus years, I see it all the time where people reach out to me and their dream home, the house that's perfect for them, just came on the market and they want to write an offer. But here's the thing is that if it's their dream home, it's probably many other people's dream homes. And what happens is often is that basically people are, are too behind the eight ball. They, they didn't get prepared to pounce. Um, and so they're in the process of even, you know, just trying to figure out if they qualify for a loan when other people are writing offers and they miss their opportunity because somebody else, you know, was ready and, and bought the house. So even if you're, you know, if in your mind, you're like, eh, I'm not going to do this until, you know, sometime next spring or whatever the case, get your stuff figured out now, get pre-approved now. And then that way, when the property that you want to buy comes up, which you never know when it's going to happen, it could be today or a year from now or whatever. It's, you know, you never know who's going to list their property, right? So be ready to seize the opportunity would be my advice. Okay. Okay. For me, for buyers, I think with all this stuff happening with the buyer's agent, the buyer broker, I think the age of the individual agent, the part-time agent, the person just doing it by themselves is kind of over. That's kind of why we started a team. I think Mm. that a lot of the emphasis right now, if you're a buyer is to work with people who realize that this is a huge, huge purchase you're making and they focus in on it. They give you the attention, they give you the love and they give you all their expertise in the area. I think vet people you're working with, you know, see how long they've been in the business, how many sales they've done, but not only that, also their education level, like where are they at? How the person that you're having represents you? What, what is their, what is their resume look like? You know, I think Mm -hmm. now is more than ever very much now that money and now that like, you know, percentage or paying, you need to know who you're hiring, right? It's like if you're going to work with a lawyer, right? You're going to look at their credentials. You're going to see what they've done and everything too. Don't think that doesn't come true in real estate as well too. So I would say just vet, vet, vet. And um, watch this YouTube channel because we're going to show you, we're going to tell you what buyer advice and seller advice you're going to need to to exist and to thrive in the Sacramento Mm -hmm. real estate market. All right, Aaron, any parting words? Hey guys, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next week. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. We got another playlist of myself and Aaron right up here. And we got another video right here for you. And subscribe, 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 because we're dropping some great content about the area. Until next time, guys, this is Mark. Have a good one and uh, stick with the market and stick with these YouTube lives and these videos that we're dropping. It'll keep you in tune with what's going on in the Sacramento real estate market, because like I said in this video, it is changing week to week.